All right, we are back for episode 123, 123 of Digital Divination. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. You know, hey, I, all, every time we get together like this, I uh, I feel you know compelled to say how much I love doing this with you guys and how also I'm an employee of the Wizards of the Coast and uh, my opinion or mine are not theirs. Great. <laughs> I, and I'm really thankful for that as well. Yes, yeah. we're all thankful. Well, tis tis the season opinions... for thankfulness. Yes. As, as a matter of fact, since we are recording in the future, uh, happy Thanksgiving to you all. <laughs> are we recording happy in the Thanksgiving. past? Yeah, we're recording well, in the past, John. In the past Perforce. for the future. But Yes. That's right. Yeah. As of today, when this gets out, it'll be Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving to you. American Thanksgiving, by the way. Oh, happy, well, happy American, American Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. <laughs> yeah, the Canadians, I think, had their in October this year. It was really crazy. Yeah, we were up in Canada when it was yeah. like the big oh. holiday. And we're like, what yeah. holiday? They're like Thanksgiving. I'm like, it's it's not no, no, you know, no, I'm just going to yeah. be quiet because I'm I'm the outsider here. Yes. And uh, yeah, I realized that Canadian Thanksgiving was when we were there. Nice. Did, did, was, did they have a Black Friday or anything after it? Or was there anything... Uh, uh, I hear I don't, Canadian. I, mean, not that I, knew. I hear that the Canada uh, the day after Canadian Thanksgiving is is called Nice Friday, where everyone oh. is just extra polite to each other. Wow, <laughs> it's yeah. that's hard to distinguish from the other days when we were in mm-hmm. Canada. I know. Okay, yeah, let's we'll try really hard not to alienate any of our Canadian <laughs> listeners. <laughs> So They're if either so of you nice. are listening now. <laughs> <laughs> so Ryan, if you're listening, we apologize. <laughs> oh, he will listen to this. Yeah, I know he will. That's yeah. right. Okay. Uh, all right. All right. So, um, you know, uh, we were talking a little bit beforehand, and I think last year it was just Ron and I, and we discussed a a uh, thanks, uh, what kind of Thanksgiving kind of stuff. And um, I think... Uh, now I'm I'm off track for where we because I was going to get into what we were going to talk about, but we should actually we talk about what we're going to do for Thanksgiving. What we're going to do, and then we'll get yes. into some. We yes. promise it'll be sci-fi related by the yes. time we get to the end. Okay. Yes, let's do that. <laughs> um, Jason has something fun to do. I guess I'll t- I'll talk about what I'm going to do because it's it's going it's hopefully going to be fun. Um, so uh, I've been volunteering sort of on a weekly basis at the animal shelter nearish me. Um, you know, it's about 15 minute drive, uh, but um, it's the animal shelter for the area, and I, I I usually do it every like Saturday morning. I go and I spend about two hours uh, walking the dogs, and maybe if there's time. Uh, hanging out with the dogs and taking them to a yard to jump around and stuff like that. It's been very great, fulfilling. Um, I've uh, got to the point where I work with the sort of the slightly more reactive dogs, like the more shy or fearful or aggressive dogs. It's, it was a whole training I had to do. It's been great. Um, I was just there last night. Uh, uh, the fir- first time I've done it in a while uh, in the in the sort of a- late afternoon when it got dark at like when it gets dark at like five o'clock and I was there until mm-hmm. six and it's just like I'll take the dog out. No, oh, this path behind the um, the shelter is not very well lit, uh, so it got a little spooky there at the end. Um, but um, this year, uh, 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 this year, this week, I'm going to go in Thursday morning. I'm going to do another do one of my two hour shifts. Walk them in the morning, and then I'm going to uh, basically take a dog home with me um, for the night just for the for the rest of the day and and for the until the next morning they encourage this sort of thing to sort of like it's like overnight fostering basically uh and it gets the dog out of the shelter it gets them maybe some socialization with other people and in an environment that's not as scary for them uh stressful there's not a bunch of other dogs there uh that kind of stuff and so uh it's sort of a weird like it, it when they told me about this when i was like when went to like the volunteer orientation i was like Okay, what this it, this is a dog library? I don't understand how this is supposed to work. <laughs> yeah. Like I could just grab a dog and leave with it. Like no, there's a whole procedure. You know, I've got to sign you waivers. Check and it stuff out. Like that. Right. And, yeah, you yeah, can't yeah. have it overdue where there's a fine. I, I, ooh, they'll, they'll probably come after me. Um, but uh, uh, because you know I've, the dog is with me and not getting seen by the public, they're not getting adopted. That's the thing. So they usually they they persuade you to do this on 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 a day in which the shelter is closed to the public, which is like usually Mondays. Mm. But the shelter is also going to be, um, I think, close to the public on Thanksgiving, uh, uh, and so uh, might as well do that. Otherwise, they're going to be in there, kind of like you know, the volunteers will still be there and the, the staff will still be there, but you know, 
might as well take them out. Get them here. Maybe I'll we'll we'll get them some some chicken or some turkey from the from the supermarket and let them feast on that. Really spoil them, <laughs> spoil oh, them up a bit. I don't know well, what the thing is. I don't even know which dog I'm going to take yet. That's what I was going to ask because you were, if you were there last night and it's only a couple days, you're going to you already have one picked out. Are you? I I have an I, I have a thought about one. Like there's one that I walked okay. that was very sweet and very nice and uh, uh but. You know, that's four days away from, from currently now. Uh, mm-hmm. And he could get adopted by then, right? Like the shelter be, I mean, I guess the shelter's not open on Monday, so it'll only be like two, 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 two days. But there's, you know, whatever. And there might be another dog that needs it a little more, you know. Mm-hmm. Well, but, hopefully he gets adopted by then, right? I mean, it'd be great. I mean, hopefully, I mean, that'd be great. Yeah, yeah if that happens, that's yeah. great. But otherwise, um, he's just a, um, I can't even remember what he's like. I think he some kind of mixed breed. He's just this black and white dog called Oreo. Um and I'll show you all a picture that I have of him when when this is over. Nice. That'd be awesome. I'm carrying forward the library uh, analogy, though. I'm like, you know, you could hold on to them for a couple of days if you reshelve them in the wrong section <laughs> and then go back and find them again. Oh, no. Yeah, uh, can't yeah. put them in a, the wrong kennel. They'll, they'll see. Oh, no. Bad idea. Um, There's probably training against that. Yeah. But there's all sorts of dogs that I've been walking that have been really sweet and special that have kind of been there for a little bit longer than other dogs. The little dogs there get sort of snatched up pretty fast. Um, it's the sort of larger huskies and pit bulls and stuff like that that take a little while longer to get adopted, uh, which is a shame, but they're all pretty great generally. My my Thanksgiving story also involves a husky, if Ooh. I can <laughs> insert yeah. myself here. We've got uh, we've got relatives uh, that live, uh, you know, about two, two and a half hours away uh, that we're going to go see on Thanksgiving. But my wife was just down there uh, just last weekend. Um, she went with another friend. It was a really good visit, just them. Uh, I stayed here with the kids. Um, but she texted me and said, oh, you know that, you know, my cousin's wife is going to be giving birth in the just a couple weeks, like first part of December. Uh, they they want to know if we can take their husky. I'm gonna when I come back, I'm coming back with their husky, and I'm like, oh well, that I I'm assuming that that's gonna be one less, you know, the the uh, sometimes demanding animal for them to take care of because there's a very high energy, you know, mm-hmm. this husky in yeah. particular is very high energy, um, needs lots of walks. So sure, and then so she comes home with this husky that stayed over at our place before. So this husky kind of knows our dogs and kind of knows the place. Um, and so I asked my wife, I'm like, oh, how long are we, how long are we keeping this, this Husky for? And she's like, I, I, I don't know. Mm. I, I didn't ask. I'm like, what's, is it forever? Are we, is this our (laughs) dog now? I don't, I don't know. She's like, no, I don't think so. But, and she was not very clear at all. It turns out we're going down to the same family for Thanksgiving. We're going to leave the Husky here. But over the Thanksgiving table is the perfect opportunity for me to say, um, w- when, if ever, do, should we bring your husky back? <laughs> because right now I don't know. Maybe it's going to be with us through the end of the year, maybe a month or so past that. I, I, I just don't know. But I'll find out on Thanksgiving when we have the husky talk over the Thanksgiving table. Yeah. <laughs> I can't relate this to any library analogy. This is like the, if the library left a book in your house. And then <laughs> that, that didn't, right. didn't try to get it back. This is interlibrary loan is what it, it sounds like. It is an interlibrary like. loan. Oh, that's okay. great. Thank you, that's John, good. for yeah, making you did that it. connection. You did it. Yeah, so, well, well how, about um, you? how about you, John? What are you doing? Well, this will be one of the first years in probably, oh, maybe 10 or 15 years that we're not mm. hosting Thanksgiving at our house. So we, we moved over the summer, and now we're further away from everybody. And so – longer drive, not two and a half hour drive, but longer drive for a lot of folks. But more importantly, um, we have all our furniture in our main living area in our garage. And we have painters in there that have covered like all the floor and like a lot of the services with material. And uh, they've been patching holes and retexturing and starting uh, tomorrow, Monday, they're going to be spraying all our trim. And then on Tuesday, they're going to be painting the ceiling, I think, and then Wednesday, hopefully the walls, but they're not going to be done then. That This is just like the kitchen and living room. They still have the hallway, the bedroom, and the bathroom. So it, it is pretty much uh, uninhabitable. So that's why I'm here now. I'm at uh, our other, our secondary location in <laughs> Maine <laughs> Island. Um, and uh, yeah, so we're going to go to Kitsap County um, to visit my sister-in-law for Thanksgiving. And uh, 
it's actually going to be kind of nice because you're not spending like usually Thanksgiving a couple of days before we're spending a lot of time prepping and cooking and the day of it's like all cooking and stuff. And, um, and so it'll be nice for the first time in like, like a dozen years to like be a guest at somebody else's mm-hmm. house for it. Um, the only downside is that, uh, and I was kind of talking to some folks here that for the last four or five years, one of our friends has been coming to our house for Thanksgiving and, now I can't invite him to where we're going, so it's like, uh, uh, hopefully he's got somebody else to to. Uh, this is Scott, uh, Jason. Yeah, uh, no, you said. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. I mentioned yeah, it before. Yeah. So I, I I'd invite him here if we weren't getting in the car and going two and a half hours. Yeah, away. that's why I asked uh, that. You know, I'm trying to uh, knock around, but um, yeah. So that's that's kind of the the plan. Now we do have a situation with our dog, and in, in uh, to bring this back mm-hmm. to the dog thing. Mm-hmm. And uh, he's he's a little older. And when we were in Bothell, we had a kennel that connected from our garage to the outside. And that's mm-hmm. typically where we'd leave him for, you know, if we had to go for uh, Thanksgiving and whatnot. Um, and he likes his kennel a lot because that's where he gets his treats and it's warm. But we don't have a kennel here now. And, um, and my sister-in-law, I, I don't know, I didn't realize that people like this existed in the world. But my sister-in-law doesn't want a dog in her house. Can you imagine? Mm. No. Yeah. What? What? I know. I know. Not at all. So uh, I think what we're going to do, because our, our, our house has got all the floors, everything covered, and we have a doggy door, um, and it's got heat because we have to keep heat on while they're painting. Um, they're going to be done painting all those areas. <laughs> I think we're just going to leave him in the house with his bed and water and treats, and he can go out the doggy door, which we've been trained him to do, to, to yeah. do his business. Um, but we haven't we haven't left him, you know, since like, the pandemic we haven't really left him for a long mm-hmm. period for super long time he generally goes everywhere with us and i don't want to bring him down there and basically leave him in the car while we're doing thanksgiving it's kind of a yeah. you know so so that's that's kind of the angsty thing that um i'm kind of dealing with dog wise he's an old dog and he generally sleeps waiting for us to come back so it's not a mm-hmm. huge deal but you know yeah. that's the thanksgiving a dog story I have, and I don't know how that <laughs> like, ties to any library at all. So. Ooh, uh, uh, Maybe it's a personal library. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. It's, this is this is this is one of those um, uh, you, uh, I don't know those lending li- those little mini lending libraries that oh. people put outside oh, the their ones houses. That sit in maybe the little box out front. Yeah. yeah, yeah, something like that. I don't know. Yeah, and he's getting kind of old too. Well, I mean, like you know, Ron had an issue with. One of his dogs uh, just today, an elder. Yeah, I was gonna. Well. I was gonna not be here because my daughter called up when we were yeah. away gaming. My wife and I were both away gaming, and she's like our little dog, who's very old, fifteen or sixteen, something like that. We're not exactly sure um, how she was. Like her, her jaw was wouldn't close, and it was sort of sitting funny, and she was it had blood all over in her mouth. And I go, oh, "This sounds." And she was wheezing, like this sounds terrible. Um, so we hurried home, and we're asking some questions and doing a little bit of research. You know, while I'm driving, my wife's doing some of the research, see what's going on. Um, and it, it, we settled by the time we got home uh, on pretty clearly like a, uh, a fractured tooth, probably. Oh, okay, yeah. Um, and that, and that seems to be the case. Um, the problem is, as a very old dog, she doesn't, she doesn't have very many teeth anyway, and so we give yeah. her nice soft food, but she sees the other much younger, bigger dog get kibble, and so our old dog thinks kibble is like a treat. Wow. And that we're treating the other dog. So she really way. wants kibble, even though she can't really chew it. And she can yeah. chew it even less now. Mm-hmm. So uh, anyway, we're going to have to get her tooth looked at and make sure that's tended yeah. to. And in the meantime, she's going to have to deal with the soft food. But Yeah, poor baby. Oh, yeah. So Anyway. So that's our, our dog-related Thanksgiving. Yes. Uh, yeah. Thank you for coming to our Dog Finder episode, everybody. <laughs> that's uh, Dog Finder. <laughs> But we're not supposed to be talking about dogs on Thanksgiving, though. In in, in America, at least, we talk about uh, turkeys. We talk turkey at Thanksgiving. And uh, and what where I was getting started is like last year, Ron and I um, uh, discussed a turkey playable race in Starfinder One. Well, you know that's Starfinder One. That's that's the old system now. That's so last yeah. year. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> last year, yes. So we're, we're going to talk turkey about something else instead. Uh, for Starfinder 2nd Edition. Let's do it. 
Okay. Uh, or should I, it be? I don't know. I had a vague idea of doing, like, I was uh, thinking about, you know, thinking about Thanksgiving and thinking a little bit about, like, how there are very few successful Thanksgiving themed horror movies. Like, you don't do the creatures. There's Thanks Killing, which has a ridiculous killer turkey uh, in it. Um, there's the Eli recent Eli Roth movie, just I think called Thanksgiving, which has a killer Puritan. Um, uh, oh, yeah. But that's it, that's actually that. pretty recent, even though it was yeah, yeah. from. It was built up from a fake trailer in like the Grand House movies years and years yeah, and years that, ago. They that, finally yeah. made a movie out of it. They've they've made the weirdly like two or three movies out of the fake trailers in that mm-hmm. Grindhouse in that Grindhouse mm-hmm. life. Um so yeah, so uh 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 I'm sure there's at least one other one that doesn't, you know, isn't probably not very good. Not very another thing very memorable. But, you know, with the problem being maybe it just needs a uh, maybe something of a sci-fi bent to it. Maybe we need some sort of turkey-ish or Thanksgiving-based creature, monster, alien to threaten people, mm-hmm. you know, to, 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 to base the movie around. Oh, a turkey monster. Monstrous a turkey? turkey? A monstrous turkey. Not just, just a monstrous turkey. So let's sci-fi it up. Let's yeah, you yeah. Know, star finder it up a little bit um, and come up with something that is a, I don't know, um, does it, is it a turkey crossed with a, some sort of drake that's is that too fantastic? Is it turkey plus some sort of like xenomorph situation? Uh, is it turkey and the swarm, right? Or uh, a swarm of turkeys. Ooh, that would be not, bad. Not a swarm, a swarm of, turkeys, of turkeys. A turkey and the swarm. <laughs> well, you could have a swarm of turkeys. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm talking about like the swarm yeah. creatures or something like that. I do I think know. whatever we, whatever we've got, it ought to be an intelligent turkey monster, right? Sapient okay. at, at least, but intelligent at best. That's now wants vengeance for all the uh, turkey yes. farming that's been done. Okay. And even that's if good. turkeys are, you know, not strict biological kin to this uh this turkey monster i mean they're just mad as hell about all the turkey eating and they're going to make it they're going to make all the the other species pay for their uh for their turkey eating ways and it yeah. should have a natural ability to put enemies asleep oh a trip oh, like fan <laughs> style ability uh you don't have to eat them though right you have to you just somehow it just has the somehow yeah it sort of has this uh, gorgeous has sort of thing trip to fan and in i a mean cone. you can just that's a, oh, a spell yeah. it can yeah. be a spell casting turkey yeah. do we want it to be magic do we want it to be um sci-fi more sci like i mean it could be bad it could be both right it could be sci-fantasy right that's true uh yeah. but do we want to throw in all that magic or is this just a the perfect turkey killing machine not turkey killing machine but perfect turkey <laughs> killing right, hyphen turkey. machine yeah that's right that's right Depends as long as you know the, the two words that i think come together here that i would like to incorporate some way is like a uh giblet cannon that it uses which uh which implies that at least some sort of you know high tech maybe some sort of cyber giblet cannon cyber turkey know. okay mm-hmm. yeah yeah. All yeah, right. Yeah. Well, I was thinking, you know, turkeys are probably related to or have evolved somehow from a dinosaur of sorts. And so maybe they're some sort of uh, raptor turkey, you know. Oh, I do like that. I do like that. That's <laughs> ferocious. Right. Yeah. And, yeah. And dinosaurs can be really big. Yes. This could be a really big turkey <laughs> cyber right. okay. sleep inducing monster. <laughs> a a uh, a roar or like maybe said some sort of gas that sort of puts you all right so let's let's uh let's let's maybe start thinking about numbers uh, okay, okay. Let's, let's talk about that and then we can start uh uh throwing all sorts of other things in there well that. now this is what remember what Starfinder CR second edition our turkey exactly what what level is this turkey creature um I mean, I always want to throw things that would be around five just so that we can have them in the sort of lower levels. But that doesn't necessarily be super ferocious. We can go maybe up to seven. Or we could mm-hmm. do something like a, uh, you know, a one type of creature and then the better sort of version oh, of the yeah. creature. The elite in the turkey, same spread. turkey thing. Yeah, so if we do like a seven, like you say, like a seven and then like a 13. Yeah, okay, for the elder turkey Right, yes. right. Okay, great. Yes. All right. Turkey sovereign, um, you know. 
Yeah, indeed. Um, okay, so that that number, I'm just throwing a, just for, put a seven on there. You we can just throw in a whole bunch of numbers really quick, right? Uh, since this mm -hmm. is you know based on pathologic technician, we already know things like oh, it's probably got an AC of around twenty four. Um, mm -hmm. We can give it maybe about one hundred and twenty, one hundred and thirty hit points. Mm -hmm. um, and we can talk about. Uh, do you want to think about this thing got a good perception or just a sort of a medium one? Is it good? Yeah, I mean, I mean turkeys are. Turkeys are sort of well known for not being like super like with it, you know what I mean? Yeah, they're, they're, they're supposedly they're very stupid. Out. Okay, we'll 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 do moderate. We'll do moderate for okay. the perception session. Is at about fifteen, um, and then we can throw in saves around the lows numbers as well. Maybe right, like right, right. Re good reflex or good fortitude. Good fortitude, tough yeah, turkey. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, you don't like it. I mean, there's people people don't want a tough turkey on Thanksgiving, but this tough turkey is coming for you. Low, um, low will saves though on this thing. Definitely, we'll put to plus yeah, twelve right. will. Let's say plus fourteen reflex, plus eighteen fortitude save. I like it. Um, yeah. Um, I don't know if anybody out there is writing this down. Please do. Um, <laughs> and we can kind of throw in some if we want to do the uh, the 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 stat. Uh, you know the the uh, attribute modifiers. Um, uh, probably what well, we're talking like strength and con, or probably you're pretty high. Or do we want to do well? well if we're, gonna, we're gonna have a cannon, but this will be, I think, there'll be like a soldier style cannon, meaning more that's gonna be more like I think an that's area right. effect yep. than a sort of a precision situation, right? Mm -hmm. Um, so we can put the decks a little lower, maybe put the decks at uh, strength of six, uh, con of four, uh, decks of two, right, intelligence, wisdom, yeah, yeah. yeah, the modifiers plus plus modifiers. Mm -hmm. We're talking like, uh, you know, maybe plus zero int minus one wisdom, yeah, plus zero charisma, just sort of make those nothing. Uh, we don't really need to worry about that. Okay, so not um, so we've already said not spellcaster by putting that plus one yeah, or plus zero minus one plus zero. Well, yeah, kind of. I think we can do. I mean, it doesn't mean that we can't base the, the DC does not do based on those two. Whatever well, this that's a good point. Sleep yeah. is, but it can be you know any. It can be the number that it needs to be. It'll be mm -hmm. probably be around twenty two, twenty five, or something like that. But I think I think rather than spellcasting this sleep effect, I think if it somehow exuded it from some orifice on its body. It would be very interesting. Sort of breath let's, weapon, maybe. Let's, let's talk let's about not, this. If you want to go breath weapon, okay. yeah. <laughs> well, let's talk about this. If we're going to sort of a cyber situation, yeah. right? All of these abilities don't it could all be sort of a, almost equipment based. They don't have to be intuitively. Maybe it's got something that it's um got that it's one physical thing. It's got good uh, the beak or something uh, that right. it can have a sort of a beak attack. But the giblet cannon and the sort of sleep gas could all be items essentially right you know right, it could be right, like right. so oh, it's a oh, cyborg yeah. cyborg yeah so it's just, so it comes out of its body too but it, yeah. it maybe it just sort of it has a, like a valve in its neck and it just shoots out it's yeah. not quite a breath weapon like but that. it has the sort of like that. uh uh uh, uh sci-fi bent to it right yeah um yeah then we just say let's talk about do we want it to have just natural attacks for its melee attacks or just uh do we want to give it also like a sword or a bat. I think the, bee, the I mean the beak is kind of scary on a bird that big, yeah, right? Claws, Especially if they're too. dinosaur related. Oh, yeah, and dinosaur well, claws. Agi yeah. Agile claws, maybe. Yes, let's right? give it some agile claws. Um probably we could say that's a uh well let's go high on those. Let's go plus eighteen mm -hmm. for the attack wow, rolls nice. on on the beak. Uh and the claws. The claws will be agile, we'll just make them do a little bit less damage. Ooh, will it get a multi attack? Um well, here's something multiple actions. It could take yeah. multiple actions, right? Okay. So here's something we can do. I mean, you got you could go move towards something, you know, like um, uh, Draconic Frenzy, which has two actions. It does three attacks. So we could do something like that. Let's do something fun though that it can do with the claws and the uh, and the beak and some sort of combination thing. Oh, like a grab uh, or something. It can you can give it. Why don't we say? Why don't we say we give the claws agile? We give it grab, right? Meaning we got to give it a good athletic score, and we'll throw that up at a bit about plus seventeen for that. Um, and then we give it a um, peck. Uh, it's got a beak attack, normal beak attack, right? But it's got this thing. It's got a, a one action ability called peck, uh, or peck to death, or something like that, right? Bloody peck, or something like that. Um, and the uh, requirements are: uh, uh, has an animal, it has a creature grabbed with its claws, mm -hmm. and so uh, it does that. When it does that, it has you grabbing its claws, and then it just pecks you, and it does. We'll say for one action, uh, grab it needs to be grabbed, and it's either maybe could make two peck attacks against you, or it's a peck attack that throws on bleed, persistent bleed. I love the idea of peck attack that does bleed damage. 
Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. Because if somebody's grabbed, it's really hard for their friends to kind of get in there to stop the bleed and it becomes really dangerous. Yeah. I like the way that. This is sort of like, this is, this is almost like rend, but not, but, but a little different. Mm -hmm. It'll make it a little more like it just sort of pecks into you, right? If it's got you grabbed and rips out your, your, rips out your giblets, rips out your jugular, something (laughs) like that. That's right. Really just sort of carves you up, right? Um, oh, that's another one. Yeah. 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 I mean, that's something, another ability we could give it a carving, carving ability. Um, hey, let's, I want to. I want to. I want to step back now that we're thinking about mm-hmm. sort of the action routines that the creature can take. Maybe this like tryptophan gas mm. that it emits isn't an action but a reaction. If somebody next to oh, it kind of yeah. hits it, like it, it oh, yeah. splits some tech thing and <laughs> puts out some tryptophan gas to mm. put uh, adjacent right. creatures to sleep or something like that. Yeah. I like yeah that. Okay. Great. Good. We'll do that. That. But give it that reaction. Um, uh, snoozy time reaction um right. and it's uh uh say struck with a melee attack right and that'll be the trigger that's right uh a uh, uh, uh should it be a, have to be adjacent to the creature or can it be if can if someone hits you even from like with a reach weapon 10 feet away with a melee attack i i, I like rewarding people that use reach weapons to make them feel good about oh i'm using the right weapon in this yeah, circumstance okay because if the creature's got somebody grabbed maybe mm-hmm. it you know the tryptophan gas it's, you know, every, you know, everything adjacent it does, to it. So you, if you're going no to reach what? weapon, you're not going to do it. But if it got somebody grabbed, you might put them to sleep right in my, right in its claw. That's bad news. It's not great. Yeah. Um, okay. I am, sorry, with something we didn't talk about right off the bat, we were talking about this being a big creature. I'm, I'm picturing this large. I don't know about y'all. If yeah. Y'all well, huge. even the seventh level you think is large? The seventh level is large. And I think maybe we can go huge, be huge. Like 13. Yeah. Or with gargantuan. Come on. Oh, that's pretty big. Oh, we, all right, like your, I like your thinking. I like your moxie. <laughs> um, that when it's going to be that big, I'm pitch, almost picturing it to be almost a like a super evolved. Yes, yes. Killing machine version. It isn't just that's right. All the numbers a little higher. It's got something else. But it, um, um, yeah. So let's finish um, this one oh, though. The seventh level. Let's finish one. this okay. one first. Reaction. Uh, if so, once per round, it's just going to. I mean, just think about that. If it's if it gets everybody all the time, once per round, it's always going to be doing that. So unless yeah, people well, are shooting, well, hmm. Although Starfinder is more of a ranged meta, right? So people are going to be mm-hmm. shooting. Starfinder second afar. edition, especially, yeah. Second edition, exactly, yeah. Um, so we'll just say, yeah, we'll just say, um, a uh, 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 reaction struck with uh, an adjacent creature strikes it with a melee weapon, uh, not, or a melee attack. Um, right. Doesn't have to be a weapon; it could be a natural attack. Uh, it psh, a canister bursts psh, in its in its cyber body and sprays this gas in a five foot you know emanation around the creature. Everyone has to make a fortitude save. Uh, mm-hmm. Let's give it twenty DC twenty five since it's. You know, yeah, I think almost like it has blister right packs set in its armor. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah, yeah, I like oh, that. Yeah, and yeah. Armor, yeah. Um, that burst out. Psh, uh, and um, a, I mean, we could go quite crazy and say this can only happen four times in a fight, but that's four rounds and the fight's only going to last four rounds anyway. Yeah. You might as well make it sort of, you might as well make it infinite duration. But if it's as a because, reaction, you know. then it's only going to happen like once per round at most. Yeah, right. right. Exactly. Yeah. It's, it's only going to happen. So, uh, everyone make that save. Um, what do we think? Is it, is it, is it full on? Like you fail to save, you kind of go a, a bit unconscious or is it slowed let's, or is it? Let's, let's look at like uh cockatrice and basilisk in uh pathfinder second edition. Where you're slowed initially, mm-hmm. but if it mm-hmm. if it's affected by it when you're already slowed, oh, then you're unconscious. Ooh, okay. Do we want to do? I think there's a situation where you get like um, I have to get up to slowed three, and when you have no actions because you're slowed three, you are fully petrified. But that is more or less because the cockatrice is kind of maybe attacking you multiple times, right, and, mm-hmm. and able to sort of pile this on. It's not going to happen, I think, just from the reaction. So yeah, so we can say, uh. And that's way thing. worse than unconscious. If this is just putting somebody unconscious, then their friends can get them kind of back in, maybe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's that. I mean, there's like the the sleep spell basically does say, you know, uh, in general, it's like you're the, the, the even on a failure, you kind of sleep fall stand fall asleep standing up a little bit, but the the critical failures, you kind of do fall prone and drop all your stuff like you would normally go unconscious. Mm-hmm. Um, and but again, yeah, okay. So we'll say, so, but the thing is about slowed is that. On your turn, you kind of get rid of it, right? Mm-hmm. You can't be, again, sl- you're not going to necessarily be slowed twice by this. Right. I see what you mean. I see you what know? you mean. Because it's just reaction. And it's no, no, no. You, 
Mm, yeah, you got a good point there. Hmm. So a couple of things I'm thinking of, and I neither of them are good, but I think this is mm-hmm. probably instructive to show sort of the uh, uh, thinking of monster design. Maybe one of the other creatures' attack also slows. Maybe instead of the beak, I like it doing bleed, not slowing, but that's a thing you could see. The beak could also <sighs> slow, or it could have something like an aura that slows people when they get in. And this one is, this reactive thing could kind of compound you the slow what? on top of that. I, think, I don't love I think that either. I <sighs> I'm actually sort of leaning towards taking it out of the reaction and just making it an aura. You're near this thing. It's kind of pumping, constantly pumping out this tryptophan style gas. I like that. I like it. Mm-hmm. And that yeah. if you start, every time you start that you're, um, although auras usually happen at the start of your turn. Ooh, slowed and slowed would only, yeah, it, the, the, the uh, the way that things sort of proc, they, they sort of uh, go through doesn't quite work this way. So, you would could say that it's just like you are, um, cl- you know, clumsy and have a penalty to speed. Is also kind of like I'm a little bit sleepy. Mm-hmm. Uh, you don't necessarily we don't necessarily have to go with slowed and and whatnot. So, um, I would maybe go with that. Say uh, it's a it's a it's a sleep inducing kind of uh, gas around it. Maybe twenty feet. Um, uh, it's constantly piping out. You enter or start your turn there you got to make the fortitude save if you fail the fortitude save you're a clumsy one and take a let's say minus five penalty right. foot penalty to your speed Not nothing great but 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 they stack up but they stack up exactly right, yep. so if you're already clumsy and the next round you do it you get a clumsy two ten foot penalty mm-hmm. maybe it, or you know double that on a critical failure right. situation well right? then we have to say right we have to make sure our numbers say that this is mm-hmm. to a maximum of clumsy four and a speed reduction of 20 feet or something like that We'd yes to, exactly and you could say, even put a just put a little rider on there it's like yeah anyone ever gets to clumsy four they fall unconscious i like that one uh, right yep, then and yep, there yep. I think it's probably not going to happen and right. all that's going to all that's like going to penalize people is that they're going to fall down drop whatever they're holding and then the the nearest noise is going to wake them up, basically. Right, and that's yeah, four rounds, noise. though, too. I mean, well, only if you. But if you critical fail twice, oh yeah, that's rounds, true. That's true. You're out. That's, true. that's good. So I think that's sort of like is fun to sort of do the, the the critical the fail stuff. I also like how this plays into the creature strengths because if you've got somebody who is adjacent or near the creature, at least getting clumsy, they're easier to just snatch up and grab and start picking. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Exactly. Yep. Um, and then let's uh, just sort of say the giblet cannon. What does it? What does it do? It's a sort of integrated weapon in one of its mm-hmm. wing arms. We could also I just want to think about this real quick. Uh, so I think, do we want to give this thing a fly speed of any kind? No, 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 clumsy? because no? it okay. is it is canonically important that a character believe that the turkeys can fly, but it cannot. <laughs> <laughs> yes, especially for uh-huh. battles on the top of tall buildings. <laughs> should, should, should we give this thing a weakness to cold then? Uh, <laughs> so yes. they can be easily frozen. frozen yep. Yeah, I think so. Um, okay, well, we'll give it. A little, we'll give it a little weakness to cold. Just a minimum five points, whatever. Um, uh, yeah, but the Gibbet Cannon, blam! It is a you know, it's its main sort of ranged attack. We'll give it a sort of an area effect uh, uh, situation. Maybe. Um, I can't quite remember in Starfinder Second Edition if area fire is two actions or one, but we'll whatever it needs to be, it'll be that. It'll either be sort of a, a literal range. No, area fire is going to be DC, so it's not going to have a ranged line, right? right the right, right. plus this, it'll be just right. sort of like giblet it'll be a, burst, an, a, a special attack that it yeah. does. Right. What's Probably it two actually going to fire? Integrated though? giblet cannon. Yeah, right. uh, it's giblets. not going to fire giblets, is it? Yeah, I like that. Just chunks of goo, chunks of its chunks of chunk- gore. Okay. Chunks of its previous victims. Basically. Okay, I like that. That'll, I like that. that'll work. Ooh, not its great. own, that's not great. its own giblets, it. but yeah, chunks yeah. of its. Or, that's right. Or maybe, maybe or we maybe put something its in. Own. Right. Well, maybe we put something in the lore that this, since these creatures are cyber in some way, that sometimes the surgeries fail, and that the it's it's the height of honor of their society or whatever that even if you die, you're you're providing ammo for your fellow. Uh, I, I like tr- previous tr- victims better. <laughs> okay, previous victims. Little bit previous, previous victims. victims. Let's yeah. do that. Yeah. Um, so I have limited uses then because of that, probably. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, yeah. it'll be enough for the fight. Yeah. Uh, ten foot burst, eh, maybe. I like that. Yep. Cannons, put some damage That's a pretty in big there. Range, yeah, I mean, it is, big. but it teaches people to kind of spread yeah. out, right? Yeah. If this yeah, is yeah, if exactly. this if this terrifying creature is stalking you through a building when you have to cluster <laughs> up because the rooms aren't very big, that's even scarier. 
exactly. Um, what is it? What do these give? These give do anything besides sort of damage you? Are they are they acid damage or they're just sort of like bludgeoning damage with some grease or effect both. essentially? And the and difficult terrain in the area. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Because they're slippery. Good. Yeah, well, I we think could do like it. We grease, could, grease effect, and so yeah, we yet. could do a, a thing where like if you it creates an area, and if you you can you can tiptoe through it. Right? I think grease is like you can walk slowly through right. it. But if you take yeah. if you move faster, you have a chance of falling down. And the people who get hit, get hit get a direct hit get automatically a chance to fall down. Right? Yeah. So it's um, well, we could just do a lot of things. It's re, it's the reflex save right for for getting gibbleted burst. You take. Uh, uh, 2d6 bludgeoning damage and 2d6 acid damage um uh, uh and uh, and if you and if you fail to save you fall prone yeah oh i like that yep yeah because you're getting slipped around if you critically fail, that way we don't need to track difficult train we can yeah. just say if you critically fail you also fall prone yeah i mean we could have these spots on there if we really want to get a comp this is a lot this, for a seventh level uh or cr7 no, it's not I don't think so. <laughs> no. I think well, it's and I think just we're, enough. We're kind of getting to the end, too. And I don't a, know how much a more. ranged attack in addition? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think it's, we're all right. Yeah, we're all <laughs> ranged attack and then peck to death and, you know, grab yeah. on the claw. And then you're okay. done. You don't have to do anything else. I think that's, okay, that, that's that should it. be enough. Yeah. You gotta. You want to give. You want to give the creatures sort of yeah, like you were some talking options, about, Ron. Sort yeah. of insight. Yeah, give them some insights. Should have some range. Some melee should have something fun to do. Something like you said, a sort of a, 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 a routine that you think it's going to do when it gets into a fight, mm -hmm. right? And a routine that kind of shows itself or helps itself. If you have somebody who's looking mm -hmm. at it, who's maybe not doesn't know all the ins and outs of monsters, but they kind of accidentally fall into the routine. That's great. Right. Yeah. Oh, I, you know, I shoot this thing and I've knocked people prone and then I'm going to move up and try to snatch up with one of my clubs. Oh, hey, you happen to be exactly. prone. You happen to be clumsy because you're in my aura or whatever. Right. This, yeah, it all kind of exactly. it all kinds of plays into itself. Mm -hmm. That's that's yeah, good. It's going to be design right pretty there. tough. Yeah. Um, we didn't sort of give the numbers for what kind of damages it, it does, but, you know, you get your you get the idea. 2D something. Right. Uh, 2D on the claws maybe 2d4 on the peck plus the 2d8 plus three. nine on the claw uh, uh mm -hmm. on the beat on the peck and uh yeah 2d6 2D plus nine on the 2d6 plus nine on the on the on the agile claw yeah something like that right cool cool so, so if we scale this up to to 13 plus, yeah I, you're right you don't have to go I, through I, all the other numbers but you know you get the idea yeah. everything's going to go up 30 you know 30 yeah, huge AC, i think 10, 10, 10, 10, 10. is more appropriate at just 13 if it were like 19 okay. or or then we could do the gargantuan. Yeah, fair enough, fair enough. We'll keep it huge. Mm -hmm. um, well, and now what kind of, when we think about the higher level, yeah. I mean, the easy, the easy answer is this is just a more cybered up killing machine version. But sometimes the higher level thing is actually like a smarter leader type mm, of the others. So okay, maybe yeah. this is some sort of, you know, turkey... In, or a leader or oracle or you know some sort of they would still have a little bit of cyberware they might still have the same kind of canon you know you might say but maybe they've got some sort of uh you know something more that seems more overtly mystical about it in addition to having kind of mm -hmm. bigger numbers mm -hmm. and maybe this overtly mystical thing comes with having a uh a higher uh intelligence wisdom or charisma sure. instead of yeah, the yeah. And some spell-like um, effects or actual spells? I don't know. What kind of thing? I mean, turkeys Turkeys do bring people together, so maybe some sort of ability to sort of drag your opponents together, oh, right? Some yeah, sort of mis do. mystically pull people either closer to you or closer to a group. Gravity. That moves. Um, that goes well with the uh, firing a, uh, a radius of a giblet cannon. Mm -hmm. Also, right. wait, I mean, um, and again, I don't have this particularly memorized, but we can look at the the Solarian's kind of like black hole oh, yeah. supernova type yeah. ability, oh, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, and then just sort of be like, it's got, and maybe, maybe you know, maybe it's not necessarily like mystical in the sense of spellcasting, but maybe this higher level thing is in tune right. with the forces of the of the cosmos, so it has this sort of ability, that the you know, force like yeah. ability to be like, <clears throat> and then if everyone in a, oh gosh, let's say make it huge, make a forty foot burst. Mm -hmm. uh, has to make a fortitude save or get direct, pulled towards the center of the burst. Well, but, and I think it needs to be able to swallow whole. Oh, sure. Why and not? So yes. I think I think this burst actually is more like a tractor beam. Oh, it pulls it in closer. As pulls well. it into you. Yes. Mm. And if it's and, and I think it is a crime unless it's swallow whole ability is called anything other than gobble gobble. Yeah. Yes, of course. Um <laughs> 
it can be oh, well. I mean, we could it could it could so it could or it could do it. We could have the, this this ability be where it opens its maw and sort of sucks people in, or is it? Oh, yeah. I, think I think that's better. I think I think that's more thematic that's, because that's normally, probably better. Yeah. Normally, with a swallow hole, you need to make sure that its b- mouth, a jaw, beak attack has the ability to do grab. Right. Uh, otherwise, it's otherwise they, they you know they'll have to. The, the the economy doesn't work as well if you right, have to right. do it normally. So you would put improved grab or grab on the on the beak as well. We could also do a situation where um, change up the the uh, the peck to death a little bit and be a thing where it uh, instead of maybe doing peck with bleed or or maybe it doesn't damage you at all. Maybe it just goes from when you grabbed in its claw, it just goes. Up, it throws you up in the air, opens its mouth, right. and swallows, swallows you. Yeah, yeah. I was thinking that um, instead of the bleed, it had that. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, it, I mean, it could do. It could, it, yeah, yeah. Uh, either way, or we could, it, you know, do we want to have it try to be able to like gobble multiple creatures simultaneously? Because we could say that when it does a sort of that breathe in ability, anyone who's kind of gets ends up after being pulled ends up being. In the in the turkey space, mm-hmm. gets essentially uh, affected by a swallow hole. See, my initial um, thought is, oh, that feels really powerful, but we are at level thirteen here. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so, exactly. I mean, it's, it's not, not going to be automatic, right? Well, you have to be right. able to, like, mm-hmm. say, uh, everyone makes the fortitude save against the the pull, the in inhaling, um, and then they're moved closer, and then you say, like, oh, if anyone who is uh, basically ends up either adjacent or would be able to move be moved into the creature space. Is automatically swallowed. right because not all of them. Not well, like, maybe even a, yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. So it's not going to be, but but then you also have to put a limit on like it's. It could be up to two uh, creatures or something. Maybe up to two creatures of yeah, a yeah. certain size, right? Because right, there's right. a certain amount of like you can only. Oftentimes, you put it on a swallow hole. It's medium or lower, right. or whatever, on a huge creature. So yeah. right. Uh, yeah, I think yeah. that if you've got some some forced movement towards the creature. And if it's far enough out, then if they fail the save, the only scary thing that happens is you get like you get scooted a little closer. bit closer. And then you yeah. can try to run away as best you can with a tryptophan aura slowing you, right? Mm-hmm. But if you critically fail, that's or you start out really close to the creature, then right. Whoop, you're right next to it, which means um, in you go. Well, here's here's two things we do. We may we could do the gobble gobble be a three action activity. Is that's what it yeah. does? It's shoot, bloop, glump. You're inside if you fail, mm-hmm. and then say. Uh, you know, if it has anybody in its stomach, it can't do this again, right? It's not going to be constantly okay. gooping yeah. up people. So good. it's going to be like that one thing that happens, and hopefully, you know, you know, maybe the GM does it at the right time, goops up two two PCs, and then you're, oh, no, but it, you know, can't do it again, and it's going to have to be relying on its claws and its beaks and its cannon and whatnot right. for the rest of the PCs. Which is, I mean, which out. is funny. Cousins, it's cousins, tough, and it's level 13, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. All right. Uh, does this thing have it? Well, before we before we end, I know you're thinking about ending. Does this thing? Do these creatures have a name? What I like to do, I always like to go to uh, Latin names, and then well, that's what I, I I was thinking that. Um, what is it? What is butterball in Latin? <laughs> um, oh my God! The ter- scientific name for turkey is Meli- Meliagris, which is already Meliagris gallo. Galopavo. That's like that. There's something there, right? You can change some of those letters around. You can yeah. maybe not. I mean, if you know, if I was publishing this for Paizo, I would obviously change some letters around. If I wasn't publishing, if I was doing it for fun, I would probably just call it a Meliagris. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I think that's. I, I that's you know when I did some creatures for for Ron, that's exactly what it is. I pulled you know some Latin names for things and changed it around to make them sound. change some of the letters cool. around. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, they had to make sure that there weren't actually things with those names. So. Which is true. Yeah, <laughs> fair enough. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, and uh, so then if it's the M- Meliagnus, what's the second word? Meliagnus. Just Meliagnus. That's just what we call Galopavo. It. Yeah. Yeah, I think. Yeah. So, so the basic one is going to be the Mel- Meliagnus, and then the higher level one is going to be the. Uh. Well, and a lot of the I like putting on some sort of qualifier name, yeah. yeah. The Maliagris Gobbler or the Maliagris, you know, oh. Behemoth or the Maliagris, you know. Yes, I like I don't know, Gobbler is a little too silly, but I like yeah. it. 
Um, uh, Behemoth is always that. good. Be- yeah, because it gobbles yeah. you down. Behemoth is always fun. Juggernaut. No. Um. I'm sure. I'm sure. If I give me another five minutes, I would think of something. Yeah, I want something with alliteration. If we could get another M word in there, but uh, oh, I see. You want to do an? Okay, you're one of those. You love. You I love am. your alliteration. No, I think yeah. that would totally work. Uh, the Meliagris monstrosity. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, there's a there's a word. There is a word. Muncher. No, I'm being silly. Still. <laughs> it's gobble. Or it's muncher. I, I gotta get something with maw. Oh, oh, yeah. Mauler. Meliagris Mauler. But it's spelled M-A-W-L-E-R. Yes. Also silly. It is silly. But Meliagris has a G in it, though. We can kind of flip that, the alliteration. Meliagris Great Maw or something like that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Mammoth Maw. It doesn't feel tr- super t- ma- mammoth. It's too pretty. Yeah, Maw, might, yeah. Huge is it. Yeah, the, we might have to workshop this a little bit. We'll have to workshop this a little bit on... Uh, uh, out there on the on the internet, or Maliagris Master, if you're thinking it's in control of if others, it's in charge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Miss, miss, miss something. That's the, the, the tricky mega. thing with alliteration. You get a little mega Maliagris, mega Maliagris, mega mega. The the tricky when you if you if you fall down the alliteration hole, you can't you can't get stuck there. And I know, uh, I know. Sometimes true. you just you need to let it go. Fun for yeah. fun though, I like for alliteration. Fun. Yes. Yeah, yeah. I do like if I can because I'm not being helpful with the name. I can at least be a little bit helpful with the lore, right? Instead of being like you know the targeted vengeance killing machines that some of the level seven smaller uh, Meliagris are, that the bigger ones they just send to like depopulate an area. Like they'll eat anything. Right, oh, so they yeah, come in yeah, there yeah, and they're yeah. swallowing up, you know, whatever farm animals you've got or pets that people are going through. They're just they're just there to just consume. I love so, it. yes, glutton. Well, I Melia- like glutton. What's that? Nesmans. Oh, <laughs> sorry, it took me a second. <laughs> it took me a second. Uh, maybe that's from the planet. No. They're from the planet <laughs> from the, uh, Wick Rip. Oh. Yes, yes. Oceans of creamed corn. And... All right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, that's a fun journey down the uh, rabbit hole here for Turkey. And, yeah, I think uh, we've done enough damage today. Or we're curious. <laughs> Success. <laughs> well, I'm John. And I'm Ron. And I'm Jason. And this has been Digital Divination. <laughs>